Well, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. All right. If we're ready, let's stand up and have a prayer and a pledge of allegiance to begin. Heavenly Father, we come to you today thanking you for all your blessings, Lord. We pray you'll guide us as we make decisions for the county. I pray you'll keep each person that works in our county safe today and be with our first responders, Lord, as they're doing such a good job for us, Lord. Give us wisdom and knowledge to do the right thing for our county. All these things in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> All right, welcome everyone to our second major meeting of the month. Today is the 26th of July, 2021, just after 9 a.m. Item number one is our time for public comments, requests for information on non-agenda items in accordance with our Open Meetings Act. We have a request from Mary Flowers would like to speak. Mary, welcome. You're invited up to the podium. Thank you. And good morning. Good morning. I appreciate y'all. I know I tend to irritate you sometimes, but um, I'm just, I love you all, okay? Um, I come here because it seems that there is some consistency where this court habitually disregards some of the laws or, can you hear me? I can't speak any louder. This is, unless, unless you want me to holler like this, okay? Because otherwise I'm just gonna speak, okay? Um, there seems to be, uh, I don't know if you're not aware or if you forgot it, uh, but there, you have to give sufficient time for the public to uh, address some of the uh, items on the agenda. And I know you, the least amount of time you can give is 72 hours. And you do that great. Friday morning, 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, we got a meeting Monday morning, we got a new item on the agenda. So the public gets one day one business day to address this. My question is, um, what is the first step in getting an item on the agenda? What's the first step? Yes, sir. Well, the commissioners can call me or they can come and talk to my assistant. They can put something in writing and drop it in my office. So it has to be a request? Does re is there a time limit Otherwise, on the request? Otherwise, how would I know about it? Okay. Um, I guess that's my question. I said, how do you get from a request all of a sudden to a, an approval on the agenda? Because I've been coming here for a month. And this is the first time there's been one particular item on the agenda today that showed up. So I guess that's my question. Um, Texas Government Code amended section 551.143 provides that it is a criminal offense for a member of a governmental body to knowingly engage in at least one communication among a series of communications that each occur outside of a meeting. And section 551.006 authorizes members to communicate via an online message board. And that message board has to be displayed on the governmental body's primary internet webpage no more than one click away. There is nothing on the county's webpage there's, there's nothing. There's no online message board. 
nothing. So if you discuss anything between yourselves, between meetings, that's a criminal offense. It has to be in writing. I just don't like the way, and a lot of people don't like the way, that it seems this court, y'all included, seem to want to keep information away from the taxpayers who have elected you. It's supposed to be open, Texas Open Meetings Act, which I don't see in this courtroom anywhere. There's not a copy in this courtroom anywhere of the Texas Open Meeting Act. So I, I guess my question is, just be a little more open and transparent with us. We elected you for a reason, to help build Titus County and to take care of our assets. That's all our assets. The people, the land, the roads, That's all I'm asking. Just be a little more transparent and quit trying to hide what you're doing. Give us a little more time. I know I see in the paper posted all the time. Uh, other governmental agencies like the, um, the water department out there by the lake. They've posted, they've got, in their timeline is like three weeks from the time they posted. The state posts their weekly road report every week in that paper. There's nothing from Titus County Commissioners. There's nothing from anything from Titus County in the papers giving appropriate and sufficient time for the public to address it. And that's a concern. That's a concern for every citizen, including y'all, including, including the elected officials. That should, that should be a concern to you. If you're a business owner, would you, would you do that? That to yourself, not give yourself sufficient time to address an issue within your company. I appreciate y'all, and uh, y'all have a great day. Just as a point of information, Mary, that uh, several years ago the court voted to extend our 72 hours an additional 24 hours we post on Thursday morning not Friday morning okay anyone else okay thank you let's move on to item number two consider and possibly approve minutes from our July 12th meeting two weeks ago make a motion motion is made to approve that set of minutes by Commissioner Applewhite Second. Second, Commissioner Fitch. Any comments or discussion? All in favor of approval, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item number three, a report from our commissioners regarding road work status. I'll start with uh, Precinct 4, please, sir. Uh, we have been working on uh, County Road 4205, trying to get some uh, scabbing done on it we're going to seal code it here in the next week or two probably uh, also uh, county road 4315 uh, planning on if things go go good planning on seal coating it probably wednesday uh, of this week and uh, then uh, been working on county road 4020 uh, doing is I had some soft spots and all in it it's a dead end road we've just been trying to get get it back up and uh, uh, to where to get up and down it and uh, been side cutting and uh, started doing some mowing today gonna try to get the roads that we're going seal coat done first mowed first where we won't track anything up with the with the tractors or anything so we're trying to get to the, the that part of it done now We've been uh, this, appreciate the sheriff department to come out and help us patch uh, a couple of days last week. We uh, we completed. We got 1905 ready to uh, put a seal on it, a, uh, and we've got 3240. We've uh, got ready to put a, a seal on sealer on it, to, where we can go ahead and chip seal those two roads. That's about about four and a half miles. Those two roads there, and we've been um, had some culverts issues and. We got to try to find a culvert because one's washing out, and uh, 
we got done a lot of uh, we got our uh, mowing 90 percent done and uh, so we'll start back over on other, the county and start mowing again but other than that we're just uh like i said trying to get those roads ready to seal coat and uh, we're going to try to do some more so as fast as we can We've been mowing uh, around the Winfield area, and we're over in the West New Hope area mowing. Um, and uh, we did uh, some, we cleaned several ditches out on uh, 1250. And uh, 1250 and 1070, we sprayed some sealer on there to rejuvenate that road and uh, fix a few soft spots on it. We're planning on going back and spraying some more in the fall on that road habit where we can possibly chip seal it. Um, been paving, repairing on 1153, 1150, 2300, and uh, 2200. That's about it. Thank you. Uh, we've been replacing culverts, uh, finished digging soft spots on County Road 1123. Uh, we have overlaid those uh, soft spots with some cold mix, and now we are working on digging soft spots on County Road 1905, getting it ready for chip seal. And uh, as soon as my tractor is fixed, we will continue mowing uh, the ditches. And so, Thank you. Item number four, consider and possibly approve the installation of a security system for the Elections Administration storage facility in the amount of $18,085 to be paid with the HAVA security grant funds. And we have Pam, our elections administrator, is here to give us further uh, explanation. But our storage, uh, as you may know, is directly behind the space that we rent to the print shop over here on the corner, the northwest corner of the courthouse annex. And this is a big room where probably none of you have ever been. I've been in it, but it's been years ago. But it's the storage area that elections uh, began using many years ago after we remodeled that building and uh, remodeled in fact that storage area and air conditioned it so Pam tell us about this uh, desire to get some security cameras in there well um, the security system that I'm proposing installing is already we have funds available for that through the have a security grant funds that we received and so I'm not asking the county to approve additional funds for that it's already there uh, for the sake of transparency I would like to you know have bring it before y'all and let y'all go ahead and approve the uh, expenditure for that I do have a proposal from Newman Electronics do would you like to see it yeah, let, let me just, I'll just briefly read it, or okay. you can read it. It's going to be over most of our heads, but nonetheless, you can tell us a little <laughs> well, bit about I, it. I think the uh, most important part is um, uh, on the agenda, I think it's not really worded clearly because it's not only for the storage facility, it will cover the office as well. So right now, we don't have, well, we have one camera that's in my office that I don't even have access to. So... Uh, we're, going, we're proposing to put um, cameras in the general foyer area and then also uh, in those back two rooms where the voting actually takes place but we're going to have a switch on those so that we can turn them off they're not recording during a voting session because that's illegal <laughs> so um, we'll have that set up with a DVR over there and then over in the storage facility we'll have um, a a camera that is going to cover the entrance and then also the in, inside where our um, all of our voting equipment is kept and uh, I'm just trying to be proactive about this because there's uh, I, I feel like there's some, well there's some legislation on the floor as we speak that is going to affect how we run elections in the near future and so uh, they've been talking a lot about having 24 hour a day eyes on equipment and ballot boxes and so forth so um, this is a way that I think I, I can be proactive about that and then plus it was suggested in our security assessment that we began two years ago and uh, I hope to really get that wrapped up before too long although it will be an ongoing 
thing as more, more security needs come down the line and we'll have to make changes to that uh, periodically, but uh, we'll get that taken care of when it comes. So um, I think what, oh, and I didn't mention that it's going to have cameras to monitor the outdoor part. And part of our security assessment is any um, threat assessment. So, and I know this last election I had an incident that I was involved in out in the parking lot. So um, I think it'll be a definite plus for our office. And uh, so we, we would feel safer about it. And then plus our office would be beyond reproach on any of our processes. So the bottom line is that this costs $18,085 from Newman Electronics. Can I just read this? I think this is a pretty good summary that sure. uh, Dennis Newman has provided. Uh, this, the subject is to install a 16-channel CoStar network video recorder. 16-channel means he can hook up to 16 different cameras to it with eight cameras and a biometric entry into the election's storage building. So I guess that means uh, eyes or thumbprint or something like it that? It will be um, cards that we can check out to individuals if we need to let them in, but it will automatically record who's going in and out of our storage facility. Okay. Uh, in, scope of the work includes three cameras in the election equipment storage building across the street and connect them to the NVR, which will reside, I guess, over in your building. Yes. And they'll communicate with uh, wirelessly. Mm -hmm. uh, then there'll, he will install five cameras in the voter registration building itself. This will include a battery backup surge protector. Uh, there will be a magnetic lock on one of the doors to the storage building and install a keypad as well as wireless key fobs to gain access to the building, install an exit switch inside the door. The keypad is installed as a safeguard should the remote system fail. And this will be made accessible to key personnel at the sheriff's office. And it will share only outside cameras with vehicle registration. Yes. Okay. All right. Any questions? So again, using grant funds that we knew we had uh, yes. for specifically for security and this is all security related no Sounds no good. funds out of our budget i make a motion we approve it motion to approve this expenditures made by commissioner parker second second by commissioner applewhite thank you pam any any discussion all in favor of approval say aye aye, aye. okay thanks pam thank you Thank you, Pam. Item number five, consider and possibly approve a contract with Arnold Walker and Arnold CPAs for the upcoming 2021 audit. That'll be for the year ending September 30, 2021, here in a couple of months. Uh, Barbara, what do you need us to know about this? Is this the, the, thir the third year? of that original agreement or um, the original agreement that the county had for many years um, laney walker did not want to keep that until a new auditor was named so we've been going year to year on that okay. this is again a one-year project i talked with him about that there are so many requirements out there that they are doing that with most of their customers most of their clients they're going year to year so uh, this is a standard contract there's not anything different in here well, there is one thing that has always been in there I need to call it to your attention. In addition to approving the audit for the county, this also includes the audit for juvenile probation department. And I've talked with Christy Davis, who manages that for the county for that consortium. And she's, she knows the amount, and she's familiar with it and willing to go forward as I am with um, Arnold Walker Arnold. The cost is an increase uh, of $1,200. Last year it was $34,100. This year it's 35,300 for the county's portion. Okay. And I assume that this is uh, your opinion that we should approve this? Yes, sir. All right. Any questions about 
this agreement with Arnold Walker and Arnold to be our auditing CPA firm for the upcoming year end. You can approve it, deny it, table it. Make a motion, we approve the contract. All right. We have a motion to approve this contract with Arnold Walker Arnold, made by Commissioner Fitch. Second. Second by Commissioner Parker. Is there any discussion on this? All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you, Barbara. Item number six, consider and approve possibly sheriff and constable fees for the upcoming fiscal year that will begin October 1 of 2021. This is something that we do each year. Uh, we take a look at our current fees that are being charged by the sheriff's office and the constables. These are things such as subpoenas, summons, writs of possession, uh, justice court citations and such and I contact the constables and the sheriff each year and give them a list of current rates and they report back to me as to whether they would like to see increases and each department there the constables and the sheriff have both recommended this that is uh, apparently a more common uh, amount to be charged uh, go from $85 up to $100 for subpoenas, summons, and citations. Those are all currently at $85, and they are recommending that we go to $100. We have not had an increase in several years. But those recommendations come from those two departments, and based on your approval, I will report this back to the state so that they can properly uh, update information related to Titus County. I make a motion to approve it. Motion to approve these rates and increases comes from Commissioner Parker. Second. Second by Commissioner Applewhite. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Item number seven, consider and possibly approve a subdivision request for Fontana Ranch Estates. And it's my understanding from Joyce that this is essentially complete. However, the plat says preliminary plat and really should not contain the word preliminary. So that's, and he's aware of that need and he's, supposedly going to provide that. So keep that in mind that we're not 100% there, but let me give you some background on this. This is James Arledge. For those of you that know James, he is the owner of ACH Construction. James has been around here building for a while. And this is a letter coming from Clint Bain, who takes a look at all these items for us typically and works with the developer to make sure that they understand the requirements that are set forth on our website regarding subdivisions. So, Clint Bain says, developer James Arledge doing business as ACH Construction has submitted his on-site sewage facility site plan that was completed by professional engineer George Sanford. The proposed subdivision is for the separation of four one-acre lots from an existing 59.96 acre lot that's owned by ACH. Uh, the site plan completed by George Sanford does meet the requirements listed in the Texas Administrative Code. However, there is a discrepancy between the preliminary surveys and Mr. Sanford's documentation and the information listed on the appraisal district's website as to the size of the original parcel to be subdivided. This may simply be the allowance of or loss of property due to highway right of way. If that's the case, Mr. Arledge and his surveyor simply need to ensure that the proposed one acre lots are truly one acre each of usable property and do not include road frontage subject uh, to the state right away. So in other words, that 59.96 apparently is in question. There may be some deviation from that. 
and you would think, well, why does that matter if we're just carving out four one-acre lots? Well, if that deviation affects any of those four lots and the actual uh, survey shows them as less than one acre, they would need to adjust the boundary lines on their proposed one-acre lots. Second, I want to point out to you that Mr. Arledge has included a letter from Aaron Gann at Trisud uh, regarding fresh water supplied to the proposed division. In his letter, Mr. Gann indicates that Triwater can only provide service to one lot at this time and that any additional water service is subject to Mr. Arledge paying for an engineering study performed by Trisud. This is a matter that could be dealt with as sales and construction commence, but should be completed sooner rather than later. Mr. Arledge has advised me that should Trisud be unable to provide water service to the remaining three lots, he will pay for the drilling of wells for each lot upon their sale. As previously stated, the site plan for sewage meets the requirements and Mr. Sanford's report shows that the land subject to subdivision is suitable for on-site sewage. Mr. Arledge may proceed with the subdivision procedures and seek approval and guidance from the Commissioner's Court. So I guess the only thing that I'm not concerned about the deviation over this entire large 59 acres. Uh, I am it does appear that his at least his preliminary plat does indicate that he's got one acre lots marked off and these are not necessarily four lots in a row but there's two together on one part of the parcel and two together now from my discussion with clint bain as to well why is he not paying for this uh, engineering study that uh, aaron gann has mentioned here and apparently that's, uh, I guess, several thousand dollars, and he's saying I would rather sell the first lot, uh, at least get some money to work with, and then as I sell these lots or have interest in people buying them, that then I would be uh, willing to pay for that. So I don't know if that affects your decision here. Obviously, you've got Triwater close by, but Aaron Gann has stated, I can only guarantee you service to one of those lots at this time until we can do further study and ensure that, yes, we can get it to you. So I don't know if that's a limitation you want to impose. I don't know if you feel like that's close enough. But if you have any questions, if you uh, want to approve it can, you know, with a contingency, at least that we have the final plat submitted rather than just preliminary, I think that's a given that we approve it subject to a final plat rather than a preliminary plat. And if you want to add on any additional restrictions there that limit the ability to subdivide those other four lots or those other three lots, then you could do that as well. Or I can ask for further clarification. It's up to you. Brian, I met with him uh, with James uh, two weeks ago, I guess it was, and talked to him. What what he is doing here is putting the four these four lots that he's pulling out of this 59 acres to put his uh, uh, he's going to build those four with the entrance between two of them. Uh, he's going to build two and then put the entrance in, and then build the other two on the other side. He's going to sell those four, and then he's building a house on the on the rest of the property to his own house. He lives here in town somewhere, and he's wanting, wanting to get out of town, and that's his intentions there is to build build this house. And so you got 60 them. acres he's carving out for. He's going to use 56 or so of the acres for his homestead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. How do you feel about this issue uh, regarding Try water and guaranteeing water service to those. He assured me lots. that that if Try water could not do it, that they would uh, that he would do, uh, drill wells for those those other other property. He said the water won't be a problem. He said I will drill drill wells if if uh, you know. If Are you a comfortable approving this 
even though you don't have absolute solid guarantee that dry water can be supplied there? I, I, I think we'll be okay. okay. I mean, I don't, I don't think there'll be a problem with it. Well, the major objectives we had when we did the subdivision were to make sure we had adequate size. We've got adequate size. We've got uh, adequate uh, lay of the land where we can have on-site sewage, in other words, septic systems at each of these. We don't have any road issues. No roads need to be built here. And then one of the final ones, we wanted to be sure that utilities could be brought to each of these lots. We didn't want uh, an unscrupulous or an unknowledgeable developer selling residential lots to somebody who later found out they couldn't get water or electricity. And in this case, you know, James's homestead is going to be right there. Uh, let, let me pass that picture down in case Dana hasn't seen that. But here you can see what she was talking about there. Those one acres are carved out. Okay, so again, I would ask that your uh, motion, if you choose to move forward with this, would at least say that uh, we will wait until we get final plat rather than preliminary before we sign off. But I think you could approve it if that was the only issue that you had. If you have other issues, this is your opportunity to ask for more information. So I'll let you kind of guide this motion. I'm, I'll make the motion to uh, go ahead and, and uh, approve it, uh, subject to him getting the the preliminary, I mean, not the preliminary, but the, the uh, final plat, plat in okay. to it. Okay. Once it's in, I, I don't have a problem with it. All right, we have a motion from Commissioner Parker, and this property uh, and this development is in Precinct 4, and his motion is approval pending the receipt of final plat. Second. Second by Commissioner Applewhite. Any questions from you other gentlemen? No. Okay, yeah, I'm going to get to her, but y'all okay. come Good. first. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. If you'll come up to the microphone. Uh, you said it's in Precinct 4. Can you give me the uh, physical location of that? It's uh, uh, FM 2348. I don't know the... Be glad to let you look at the plat when we're done. Ag address is, but... It's on 2348? Yes, it's on 2348. Okay, is it past the 4000 uh, intersection? The FM 4000 intersection? I'll let you look at the plat when it's, we're done. It's past 4000 entrance. Okay, cool. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right. All those in favor of approval with the uh, requirement that we have final plat. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. You want to come up and study this, Mary? If you'll just bring that back to me when you're done. Okay. Item number eight, consider and possibly approve the county's participation in text pool and designate the authorized representatives. Uh, as I understand it, text pool gives us additional abilities uh, to invest our money should we feel like uh, there's any limitations that are imposed by our agreements with Guarantee Bank. We talked about this a few weeks ago, and again, there's uh, nothing wrong with having other uh, other options available, whether or not we would use this has yet to be determined. But let's go ahead and get set up with text pool and designate the authorized representatives. And Barbara says that uh, let's approve the county's participation in text pool and designate the required authorized representatives. Uh, she recommends Cheryl Pretty, Barbara Sherbet, Brian Lee, Nanette Willoughby. I have visited with Cheryl about a couple of items, and as the treasurer, she will take care of this. I am assisting with court approval. So text pool needs to know who the authorized folks are. Those are the four she's recommending. So if you are comfortable with those four, I would uh, ask that you uh, make a motion to participate in text pool and designate these representatives. 
Make that motion. Motion's made, Commissioner Fitch. Second. Second made by Commissioner Parchment. Any discussion, questions for Barbara? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item number nine, approve oral and written reports of county officials. Make a motion we approve the report. Motion to approve <clears throat> is made by Commissioner Fitch. Second. Second. Second by Commissioner Parchman. Any questions, comments about these reports that you have from Barbara? All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Well, let's get those signatures going. And then next, consider and possibly approve Cheryl's treasurer report. Motion we approve the report. Motion to approve the treasurer's report made by Commissioner uh, Parker. Second. Second, Commissioner Applewhite. Questions, comments? All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. We'll pass that down to you. Item 11 is to approve budget amendments. I've got a few of these and I'll go over each of these for you. We are considering budget amendments 44 through 47, yeah, through 47. Number 44 is a $730 adjustment. This does come out of general county contingency. We've had several pieces of equipment, including the oven, walk-in freezer, range, and vent hood that were repaired at our senior meal center. In other words, it's not been a good year for appliance repairs at the meal center, and we have gone over budget in order to keep those pieces functional. In the amount of $730 so far, so we are asking to remove $730 out of contingency, put it into the meal center budget so that we will not be over budget in that category. Item number 45, Precinct 3 has purchased equipment that had previously been rented. The amount paid for the rental was applied by the vendor to the cost of the equipment. In other words, he gave Dana credit for what he had paid in as rent payments towards the purchase of that piece of equipment. So we had previously had rental expenditures uh, as part of our bookkeeping, but per our governmental accounting requirements, the actual cost of the equipment needs to be booked as the amount we're paying for that equipment that he's discounted plus the amounts that we paid for the rental. So we're going to go back and retroactively, re we're going to reduce the rental expense in Precinct 3 and add that into capital outlay. $7,500 is the adjustment here. So Dana's year-to-date equipment rental will go down by $7,500 and we will reflect the full gross amount of that piece of equipment uh, by $7,500. Item number 46 has three components here that affect precinct one, two, and four and these are reallocations within each of their budgets. In Precinct 1, we are, bar we are taking some other road materials in the amount of $15,000 and putting that into gravel and rock budget. In Precinct 2, we are taking $5,000 out of part-time help, $2,500 out of equipment rental and $4,279 out of the capital outlays budget and we are placing those money, $2,000 in the signs budget, S-I-G-N-S, and $9,779 into other road materials. So again, just rebalancing those accounts 
uh, for additional needs for signs and other road materials. And then lastly, precinct four, uh, an increase in equipment rental with an offsetting decrease to other road materials. In other words, Jimmy needs some more equipment rent monies in his budget and is willing to reduce other road materials. 11,360 is that adjustment. And then lastly, item number 47, this comes from the sheriff and he needs some additional prisoner medical expense in the amount of $10,000 and this will come out of general county contingency, $10,000 adjustment there. So we've had quite a few more prisoners over there as a result of these, uh, of the high uh, occupancy that we have over there. And I guess we've had sicker prisoners this year, but he needs $10,000 in additional medical expense. Those are all of the uh, budget amendments. Make a motion we approve them. Motion to approve those, 44 through 47. Commissioner Parchman recommends. Second. Second, Commissioner Parker. Any discussion on those budget amendments? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Item number 12, sign pay orders and approve payments. Make a motion with pay our bills. Motion is made to pay those current bills by Commissioner Parker. Second. Ooh, that was a close one. Mm. Uh, second by Commissioner Parchman. Any discussion there? All in favor, say aye. 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 Closing comments. Let's see here. I'm going to give you a brief update on uh, COVID. Uh, you've been hearing on the news and possibly reading that there's been an uptick in COVID and it's called the Delta variant and it's worse or it's better depending upon what you've read. Uh, first of all, Titus County has finally risen above our regional average in, in the number of people that have gotten vaccines. We are now uh, above the average in our region, but we are still below the state average on getting vaccine shots. You can still get a free COVID vaccine in the lobby of Titus Regional Medical Center. Monday through Thursday, as early as 7.30 in the morning and as late as 1.30 in the afternoon, except Tuesday, they're open 12 hours, 7.30 to 7.30, free Moderna vaccines. Um, we had, as of Friday, four people in the hospital. That was up slightly. They'd been running one to two. Um, these do appear to be the Delta variant. I don't know the technicalities as to how they determine that, but according to Terry Scoggin, they believe this is the newer Delta variant, which seems to be more contagious, more easily transferable, but not as deadly, not making people as sick. They have not had to transfer anyone out of Titus Regional to another hospital for higher level of care. Uh, those that are getting the COVID don't seem to be quite as sick. There have been a few cases of individuals that have already gotten the vaccine that have contracted this uh, new Delta variant or whatever it is that they've gotten here of late. So not a, num not a high number of those, but it, you, we now know that it's possible to get this Delta variant of COVID even if you have had two vaccinations, but those that, uh, those that have had the vaccine uh, are not seeming to be as sick. And ironically, I just got a text message from an individual that I know who had two shots and contracted the COVID and I sent this individual a text early this morning, heard you had tested positive, how are you doing? And I would absolutely consider this a person that was in the uh, uh, very vulnerable category and in, they say, holding my own, thanks for checking on me. So the message from Terry Scoggin and, and I'll pass on the same message, we are not anywhere close to a point of needing to be alarmed, uh, but 
encourage everyone to continue to get vaccinated if you have not been vaccinated. Those fall schedules are essentially back to normal. We're returning to normalcy and that means a busy fall, football games and all the related activities. Protect yourself, protect your family, protect others from passing it on and please consider getting vaccinated if you haven't. That's all I've got. Commissioner Parchman. Commissioner Fitch. Don't have anything. Commissioner Applewhite. Don't have anything. Commissioner Parker. Don't. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate everyone's time and attendance today. Have a great week. Uh, oh, need to adjourn first. <laughs> and then Hudson can talk. Motion to adjourn. Say it. Who, who made the motion? Okay. Jeff. One and two. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. Uh, aye.